Christmas. So, go, I mean, looking at bands, as you were saying, at that time, they were pretty pr dull, I suppose. And you, did you want to stir things up with the Boomtown Rats and sort of get a bit of life into music? And uh, well, I want to stir room. things up generally, but that's a part, that's a function of personality. As I've said to you, I want to stir my mind all yeah. the time. I don't want to sound like this deep person. Yeah. I get so chronically bored. And I don't think things should stay the same. And I don't think they need necessarily do that. I mean, whether you're talking about situations in Africa, political situations or musical things, you know, if, if it doesn't move forward, it's over. And so when we came uh, into being, it was a function of necessity. I mean, there was nothing on the radio that we as young guys wanted to hear and by that I meant that pop music by definition of its popularity must be about the life of the people who are listening that's what makes it popular you know suddenly there's a song in the air and you go yeah that's it what's that and the words yeah. chime with your life at that moment and it was nonsense there was nothing going on you had shawadi wadi and you know the bay city rollers and mud and nonsense yeah. like yeah. that and so you just turned off and you played the music in effect that you wanted to hear you just made it up yourself and without thinking about it, we didn't set out to have a career or anything. There were bands in the UK, there were bands in America, the Sex Pistols, the Clash in England, the Ramones, uh, the New York Dolls, Blondie in America, and in Ireland, the Boomtown Rats. I mean, you were linked with punk, but you were never sort of the brand or the type with uh, spiky hair and safety pins, were you? No, but it was, it, punk wasn't about, punk, that was only the, the attitude articulated. We came from, a slight one year earlier type thing, which was pub rock, which was largely based on English rhythm and blues and uh, a lyrical content. So we came from that, but we were very young, so we fitted in with the punk age group and the attitude thing uh, to a large extent. But no, we weren't part of that. Um, but having said that, I liked it very much. It's just that sure. that wasn't our thing. What do you get on stage these days when you're performing? I mean, 30 years on, how are the emotions compared with the, the early days? Uh, better is the truth, and I'm not saying that to like you know make people enjoy it more. Um, it's because when we started, it was great fun. I couldn't believe that I was in a rock and roll band where people were dancing and that. And then it becomes almost a, uh, you know, you get popular, and then it becomes a career thing. It's not. It's not that it's you're you really will only make music you want, but you're worried, did you sell more tickets than the Pistols? Are you selling more records than the Clash? These are your rivals, yeah. and you don't get on. It's yeah. like business rivals. So it's competitive element. It between. is competitive, and so you cease kind of to enjoy the spirit of the thing, and I'd be on stage, and I couldn't get lost in the music like I did at the beginning and like I can now. Yeah. I don't care if we sell records. I genuinely do. I don't have no clue who's in the charts and I'm not interested. But I was just talking to my mate who's here with me about like some uh, on our iPods, we've got these new bands. I think they're, they're, they're cool, you know. And it reminds me of that period again when we were young. Some great music going on now. Do I feel I have to compete with them? No. Yeah. Do I have to feel like I have to compete with my contemporaries who are still going? No. Do I feel I have even to compete with myself? No. Yeah. You know, I thought my last record, for me, was probably the best thing I've done. I don't think I'd better that record. I'd like to. Do I seek to do that when I start recording in October? Absolutely not. That was put together after a huge emotional upheaval. So did you feel really drained after producing that album? I felt drained for three years. And it, the record helped in as much as that it put a frame of reference around that, uh, those personal circumstances that led me to make that record. And uh, by making that record unknowingly and unwittingly, I was able to get around those personal circumstances and get on with my life, you know? Yeah. Looking at, uh, as a solo artist, I mean, the song of great indifference came out in 1990, wasn't it? It was yeah. sort of after uh, 1985 and Band Aid, Live exactly. Aid. Live Aid came along. Do you feel that that song regarding apathy has got more relevance now than what it did at that time, perhaps? I mean, it's a good song you picked because uh, it was a complete throwaway joke, laugh. And I made it up on the spot. And if you listen to the record, which I haven't since we made it really, you'll hear me just going, is, is the tape rolling? Because I was just noodling on a little riff. And I'm not a good guitar player, but this sounded competent to me. And off I went, and the band just followed along with me. And at the end, we're laughing, because I was doing this cod iris. Right. But whatever I sang, <clears throat> on listening back, it sounded absolutely right. Now, you can hear me just getting into the song by singing any old stuff at the beginning, and then it becomes coherent and pointed. 
and um, that I suppose uh, I've got but it's been changed into 18 languages 18 countries have done their own version of it so whatever happened to work and I always start off with that song because I get it pulls me into the gig you know, no one knows what to expect. They don't know very many of my songs. I suppose I don't like Mondays, they're waiting for that. But I start off and it's just me and a guitar. And so you've got such a low level of expectation. You ease people into the gig and you, I ease myself into the gig. And um, once I'm doing that song, I'm into the sort of fun and the laugh of it. And it's a very easy song to get into. So um, <clears throat> I hold... Yeah, sure. Well, talking of gigs and um, emotion and affections, I mean, looking at Live 8, I remember the moment watching it here in Dubai before Madonna came on and you brought on Burhan Waldu. Yeah. The, the girl who was in the images of starvation. Yeah. Um, for you, I mean, for us watching it, it was very emotional. What was it feeling, what was the feeling like on that stage in front of so many people bringing on that person who started things off? Well, I mean, Burhan is, you know, perfect. I mean, she's, you know, emblematic of that, this stuff working. Don't doubt for a second. And I tell you something, if it was just 24 years of doing this African thing, if the only result was her life, yeah. then it's worth it. Here's this scrap of humanity who was given five minutes to live when we saw her. Yeah. And um, 20 years later, she's graduated from uh, in higher agricultural degree yeah. from a school in North yeah. Ethiopia. Anything more perfect her degree is agriculture, her intellectualism, her beauty, her dignity. You know, here was a perfect exemplar of humanity and its potential. Yeah. And uh, for the crowd, particularly in London, to see what they had achieved mm. with just this one life and all the cynics in the press saying the yes, boss and just saying, you don't believe this? Just her, there you are. You know, I was in Turkey four days after Live Aid and... Uh, just on a brief rest, and this guy came running out of a barber shop in this village, and he was saying, he was saying "Live Aid." Like he didn't speak, and I said, yeah, and he said, "Add the African girl." He didn't yeah. forget Pink Floyd, forget whomever. You know, here was that's what he remembered, and that's what I hoped would happen. The G8 leaders wrote off debts of what 55 billion US dollars. Yeah, um, it was called a success. Have they lived up to that? Um, well, that was an enormous success. I mean, as a result of that, for example, Zambia initiated on March 31st for the first time ever a National Health Service. Yeah. Uh, all children in Tanzania went to school for the first time. 1.8 million went to school in Uganda. And it goes on. Yeah. Um, so that's huge. Um, where they haven't kept track is on their, aid, uh, on, on their aid promises. And so the next G8 is Germany, and now we have to force them to keep up to that. They've got till 2010, they're off track, they have to go back on track. And of course, immediately now, in the next week, we have the Arab League meeting uh, in Riyadh, and uh, we have Darfur. Um, you know, once again, it looks like that more people will be killed. And this, you know, the Arab League deny it's a genocide, whatever it is, it's certainly an atrocity. And this part of the world here really have to up their game um, in, in, in loads of areas. And uh, I, the Arab League are utterly cowardly with regard to Muslims killing other Muslims in Darfur. And I hope they focus very much on this and they arrive at a resolution. For example, last year, they promised $15 million for the Africa Union forces. But the Africa Union forces in Darfur cost $40 million a month. Yeah. And they promised $15 million. This from one of the richest yeah. areas yeah, of sure. the planet. And it is pathetic. And, um, you know, whatever about the G8, let's focus on this region. And those leaders should do something about Muslims killing other Muslims for no reason whatsoever. We're running out of time. It's been great talking to you once again. And uh, as you said, new album coming out in, well, you're going to be starting well, a new I'll album start in October. Well, probably be out yep. in the next 55 years. Yeah, yeah. So. Yep. <laughs> okay, next 55 years. On behalf of Kapinski, I think we'll hand you over this little souvenir. Give it a nice little shake, Bob, and you'll have a, a blizzard in your hands. Well, you know, I hope this isn't my Orson Welles moment, my particular <laughs> rose, but, you know, it's fantastic. Thank you. I'll bring that home. And um, um, with that memory out my, behind me. Okay. Well, once again, thank you very much indeed. Thanks. Sir. Thanks.